Hey guys, what's up Roman here from Tech Guides, and in today's video I finally want to continue with my home server tutorial video series. Now today's video is going to be quite an important topic. I want to talk about a password manager. Now in today's day and age, it has become increasingly difficult to remember all of the different passwords on all of the different sites that we use day in day out. And considering that each of these websites should really ideally have a different password, which should be like 12 uh, digits long, should have digits, uh, alphanumerics, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, and so on, and it should also not be a word that can be found in a regular dictionary, um, it has become essentially impossible to remember all of the different passwords for the different websites. And this is really where a password manager comes in really, really handy. Now, I personally have tried out about a dozen different password manager, uh, which is actually also one of the reasons why this video took so long to produce, because I really wanted to make sure that the password manager that I'm going to show in this video is really going to be the best possible password manager that you can install on your home server. Now, some of the requirements that I have regarding a password manager are it has to be super easy to install. Um, it must have a Chrome extension such that I can autofill passwords on any website that I'm using. There has to be an app um, that works both on Android and iOS. And I also want the app to be able to autofill in these uh, mobile operating systems. Another super important requirement that I had was that I needed to be able to install that password manager on my own home server. Frankly, I don't really trust any other company out there to handle all of my login credentials, especially the ones for my e-banking. I really don't want any company to have those passwords, which is why I had to find a password manager that you could install on your own server. So the password manager that I decided that I'm going to go for in this video is going to be you probably already guessed it, Bitwarden. Now, as I already previously mentioned, I did personally test Bitwarden for about a month now, um, both on my Android phone as well as on my Windows machines. Actually, there's a few of them. Uh, and I found it to be just super easy. You just install the extension on any browser, you enter one master password, and for that session, you are good to go to autofill passwords into the different login forms on the different websites. And with that, I think I made good enough points why a password manager is a really good idea. So with having said that, let's jump right into the terminal and install Bitwarden on our Ubuntu server. All right, so once we're on our home server, we have to install a few applications before we can begin installing Bitwarden. So as always, do a sudo apt update followed by sudo apt upgrade. And once this is done, we want to install Apache in case you haven't installed Apache yet, as well as curl. Now, in order to install Bitwarden, we first have to install Docker because Bitwarden only comes as a finished full Docker container. Now, if you don't know what Docker is, the gist of it is essentially that Docker containers contain the entire ecosystem of a package. So the web server, the proxies, the application, etc., all in one enclosed file. Now, the advantage of this is that you can simply download the Docker image, run it on your server, and it will simply run regardless of the other software that you have running on your server. So to get Docker up and running, we still have to install a few more applications. So the first is apt transport HTTPS, CA certificates, GNUPG agent, software, properties, common, and that's actually it. Next, we'll have to add the GPG key for the official Docker repository to our system. We can do this using curl. Then we pipe this to a sudo apt key at dash. Next, we'll have to add the Docker repository to our ATP sources. This is done using this command here. By the way, if you want to follow along this tutorial in its written form, then definitely check out techguides.yt where you can find each step shown in this video um, written down so you can essentially just copy paste all of these commands into your console. Do a sudo apt update again. And finally, install docker. Now let's check if docker compose was installed does not look like it. So let's install Docker Compose as well, as we'll need this uh, to install Bitwarden with. Next, we have to add our user into the Docker group. 
we can do this by typing sudo user mod append group docker and your username. Now, as a next step, we have to request a hosting installation ID and key from Bitwarden. So go to bitwarden.com slash host. Enter your admin email address and press submit. Now, obviously, you shouldn't show these keys here anybody else, but because this is just a toy server that I'm using here, I'm going to uninstall Bitwarden again after doing this tutorial. I can simply show it to you, so don't worry that I show this here on the internet is really not a security issue whatsoever. Next, we're going to have to download the Bitwarden code onto our server. We can do this using curl and we can get it from this domain. This will have downloaded the bitwarden.shell file which we can have a look at actually here. It essentially will set up Bitwarden on our server. We're going to have to make this file executable. So we do sudo chmod x bitwarden before we can do sudo dot forward slash bitwarden dot shell and give the command install. Next, you'll have to enter a domain name for your Bitwarden instance. Now, don't worry if you don't have a domain name at all. You can just as well use a free domain, for example, by CloudDNS, uh, which is a DIN DNS provider that actually provides free dynamic domain, domain names. Um, so as you can see here, I have this techguide.dnsabr domain, uh, which is completely free. And this then points to my public IP address which I'll hopefully not show in this video. Um, but anyways, um, you can get this for free and then you can also generate a subdomain here, for example, at bitwarden.techguides.dnsabr.com, which then will point to the Bitwarden instance on my home server, as I'll show how to set up in just a minute. But if you're curious and want to know how to set up a dynamic domain name on CloudDNS, then check out the linked video in the card right now. So for example, you might want to use the sub subdomain bitwarden dot whatever subdomain you have on dns dnsabr.com. Now we're anyways going to use an Apache reverse proxy to access our um, bitwarden server. So we don't really need to run it under SSL. Let's use the default here and wait for bitwarden to complete the setup. Next, it asks for the installation ID that we got from bitwarden.com slash host. So copy your ID as well as your installation key. Now, if you followed my previous tutorials, then you likely already have an SSL certificate, uh, a wildcard certificate that is, that you can use on your server. If that's not yet the case, then that's also no problem. You can also simply add it later. You'll definitely want to be used a self-signed certificate. And that's it. Now, before you're gonna start Bitwarden, we'll have to change a few things in the Bitwarden settings. You can find this under slash bwdata slash config.yml. So let's edit this file. Now, as I mentioned before, we are going to use an Apache reverse proxy, which will handle the encryption of our website or the SSL part. So we don't really need Bitwarden to run on SSL itself. Now, let's change the HTTP port to something else than 80, because we want uh, to be able to point to this using a reverse proxy. In my case, I'm just going to use 8080. The HTTPS port we don't really need, so let's delete it. Next, we want um, Nginx not to use SSL, so let's say SSL false. Finally, here's where you want to add your SSL certificate as well as your SSL key. If you use Let's Encrypt to generate your keys, then those will be under etc. Let's Encrypt Life, followed by the domain name that you have. Also, the file is going to be called cert.pem rather than certificate.crt. And the private key is going to be called privkey.pem. Obviously, you have to make sure that you put in the correct domain name here. Press Ctrl X, Y and Enter. Update your Bitwarden Docker files and don't forget the sudo. And finally, you can verify if Bitwarden is running by typing sudo docker ps. And as you can see, our Bitwarden instance is up and running. Now, just to test, you can also simply enter your local IP address as well as the port that you specified in the config.yml. And as you can see, Bitwarden is up and running. 
If you don't really want to have Bitwarden available outside of your local net, you don't even need to set up an Apache reverse proxy and you really don't have to worry about the SSL certificates and the domain names and all of that stuff. You can simply run it in your local LAN and you should be fine. However, if you also want to be able to access Bitwarden from the outside internet, then you have to jump through a few more hoops in order to get this working. So to access your Bitwarden instance from the outside web, um, go to etc. Apache sites available. And now edit the default SSL configuration file, for example, using nano. Here we want to add a new virtual host entry under server name at your sub subdomain, your subdomain from clouddns.dnsabr.com. Copy and paste these settings and definitely make sure that you actually specify the right local IP address of your home server. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.50, followed by the port under which you've run Bitwarden under. Use these settings and under SSL certificate file, key file and chain file, enter etc. Let's encrypt if you use Let's Encrypt as I showed previously, dash life, followed by the domain name that you've set up, slash cert, privkey and chain.pem. Now these are also going to be the two directories and files that you should enter in the Bitwarden configuration file. Finally, we'll enable error and access logging and close the virtual host entry. Press Ctrl X, Y and enter to save your changes and do sudo service apache2 restart and hopefully if you didn't make a mistake then apache should have successfully restarted. And that's it if you now browse to your sub subdomain dot your subdomain dot dnsabr.com you should be able to access Bitwarden. The first thing you'll want to do is to generate an account, enter your email address, your name as well as a long and strong master password. Now you really have to make sure not to forget this because otherwise you'll lock yourself out out of all of your passwords. And that's it, you should now be able to log in into your Bitwarden account. Now you can use Bitwarden to generate random passwords. So for example, you can specify the length, the number of minimum numbers, the number of minimum special characters, um, and then use this as a new password on new services. So if you want to change a password, for example, let's change it on Reddit, uh, you can simply right click on the new password field, click on Bitwarden, generate password, paste it, click on save. Now in order to automatically save this password in Bitwarden, let's log out, log back in with your new password and ta-da, Bitwarden will ask if you want to save this password. Click on yes, save now. And if you go to your vault, you can see that you've successfully saved your first password. Now, the next thing you'll probably want to do is to install the Bitwarden Chrome extension, which I obviously have already installed. Now, after you've installed the Bitwarden Chrome browser extension, click on it, click on the little cog icon and enter the domain or local IP address under which you can access Bitwarden. Click on save, click on login, enter the email address that you've provided in the login procedure and provide your master password. Now to show how easy it is to let Bitwarden autofill your password, let's sign out again here. And if you click on any username or password fields, you'll be able to click on Bitwarden, click on the one you'd like to autofill and ta-da, you're locked in. Now using Bitwarden on your phone is about equally as easy. Simply open your app store, search for Bitwarden and install the app. Obviously, I've already installed it, so I'm simply going to open it. Next, click on the cog or on the little gear icon in the top left corner and enter your server URL. Click on login, provide your email address that you've signed up on Bitwarden as well as your master password and log in. And as you can see, here are all your saved passwords. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is to click on settings go to autofill services and make sure to enable autofill services. Now this doesn't really work on Huawei phones, but if you enable use accessibility and use draw over, then autofill also works on Huawei phones. 
Now, if you're trying to log in on Reddit once again, you can once again simply click on any login form, select Autofill with Bitwarden, and select the matching item. And that is about it. You've already successfully installed Bitwarden on your machines and are ready to use it in production. And now all that's really left for you to do is to go through each and every website, replace your old, probably rather unsafe passwords with new randomly generated passwords from Bitwarden. And finally, very important, don't forget to delete your old passwords from the, for example, Google or Chrome uh, password lists, because obviously it would be kind of redundant if you have this password manager, but you still told Google all of your secret passwords. Now, if you still have any questions regarding the installation procedure of Bitwarden, then don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below, and I'll try to help you install Bitwarden on your own server. And that about concludes today's video. Now, I'd like to apologize once again to you guys for not uploading in such a long time. I have been working quite crazy hours. I've also recently changed positions and, and I simply didn't have time to produce any content. However, time will be a little bit more abundant in the future and hopefully I'll be able to upload some more awesome content for you guys. Now, if you have any ideas or suggestions what kind of topics you'd like me to cover in this kind of Ubuntu home server tutorial series, then please leave your suggestions in the comments down below. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you liked this video a dislike if you didn't, subscribe for more Linux-related tutorials, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.